In this training, we'll examine crew mechanics for conducting the hammer throw event. The positions and responsibilities of the judges are based on recommendations from the IAAF publication, The Referee. For more information, please see the IAAF publication, The Referee, or consult a USA Track and Field or IAAF certified official. Let's examine the role of each official as we see them numbered here. The crew chief has responsibility for overseeing the management of the event and the officials who are part of the crew. The chief is also the primary indicator of the legality of the throw and should have both a white flag for signaling valid attempts and a red flag for signaling fouls. Judges 1, 2, and 3 will be adjudicating the circle. Each has responsibility for a section of the circle and for the overall legality of the competitor's effort. Judge 4 has the tape measure, or if electronic measurement is being used, is positioned at the measurement device for aiming and measuring the distances thrown. Judge 7 has the zero end of the tape measure, or is holding the reflective prism pole for marking the landing point in the sector. Together with Judge 4, they work together on getting the accurate measurement. If using a tape measure, the chief judge would read the tape at the circle and could be assisted by one of the circle judges. Judge 5 would indicate whether or not the throw is landed legally inside the sector. While they may use flags, the IAAF recommends using something other than flags. Judge 6 marks the landing point in the sector. In most cases, the judge will carry a cane or other marker that they can insert into the ground to indicate the landing point. In international competition, Judge 8 would have a small series of flags that would be placed outside the sector line to indicate the approximate location of each competitor's best mark. Judges 13 and 14 would usually be charged with retrieving and returning the implements to the competitors. Judge 9 has the primary responsibility for recording measurements and for calling the athletes up, on deck, and on hold. They should be in a position to hear the mark as it's being read at the circle and for conveying it, if necessary, to Judge 10 at the performance board. In many situations where electronic distance measurement is being used, the performance board is automatically connected to the EDM equipment, so the manual performance board is not used. Judge 11 has charge of the timing device. They should have a yellow flag to indicate when there is a time foul and are responsible for resetting the clock before each attempt. Judge 12 is in charge of the athlete bench and of the implements as they are returned from the impact area. Most commonly in the United States, one of the circle judges would serve as a backup recorder. Judge 9 would be positioned closer to the athlete bench. Judge 12 would handle the implements at a location away from the athlete bench, and Judge 10 would be available as an extra judge in the sector. We do want to add a special note on the movable panels at the opening of the hammer cage. The final two panels at the point furthest from the circle should be 2 meters wide and must be movable to adjust for both right-handed and left-handed competitors. The panels must be used when the event takes place in the arena with other events taking place at the same time, or when the event takes place outside the arena with spectators present. It's strongly recommended that even when this does not apply, the panel should still be used as described for the safety of spectators, officials, and athletes. Depending on the number of officials available, any two judges may be assigned to move the panels as needed. Here we can see that the chief judge and judge one, who is judging the circle, will have responsibility for moving the panels. In this illustration, the panels are in place for a right-handed competitor or one who turns counterclockwise in the circle. The panel at the top of the screen, which would be over the competitor's right shoulder, should be set at a point that extends into the sector and is at a right angle to the sector line on that side. Ideally, the end of the panel should be 1.12 meters from the midline of the sector. The near side panel, the one over the competitor's left shoulder, should be set to be parallel to the sector line on that side.